Okay, so this is going to be a much longer introduction than usual because uh, I'm really excited to share my new little discovery with you and I just really wanted to uh, properly set the scene. All this week I'm going to be talking about an extremely cool brand that I recently stumbled across online that mainly specialise in men's grooming products, particularly for like beard and moustache wearers, uh, but they also do a small range of award winning fragrances. And after purchasing uh, just one of them a few weeks ago, I, I had to buy the whole set straight away. The brand that I'm referring to is called Captain Fawcett, who are based in Norfolk in the United Kingdom, but they also have stockists around the world, uh, as well as offering global shipping. You can find a full list of stockists and which ones are the closest to you on the Captain Fawcett website or alternatively you can just order from them direct. And if you live in the UK or you're just passing through and have a, an interest in barbering or men's grooming in general, uh, you can also have a, a really uh, great fun day out by visiting the huge Captain Fawcett Emporium, uh, which is a marvellous barber shop inspired museum, which is packed with hundreds of rare and interesting artefacts, trinkets and oddities uh, dating back hundreds of years from like antique razors and barber's chairs to vintage Triumph motorcycles. Uh, that all pay homage to the uh, tonsorial art. So as well as scoffing sandwiches and sipping cream teas, you can feast your eyes on some amazing historical items and take, uh, take some wicked photographs of yourselves, set amongst a fantastical backdrop. And uh, the best part of it all is that it's uh, free entry. So I'll definitely uh, be paying it a visit in the next few weeks. But if you uh, live in a faraway land and you can't make it in person, then there's also a, a virtual 360 tour that you can uh, access via the website uh, and you can just view and enjoy that at your leisure. And I want to start by saying that this uh, video or these reviews in, uh, all this week are in no way sponsored uh, and I'm not being paid a penny to talk about these products or receiving any commission at all on purchases that you guys might make in the future. I simply bought them using my own cash and uh, I, I just like them so I just thought I'd let you know all about them. So the uh, the first fragrance I'm going to talk about today is this quirky little fella. Uh, that's uh, a collaboration between Captain Fawcett and Alessandro Manfredini, I think that's how you say his name, who's uh, an Italian sculptor, graphic artist and a male model known for his like ageless elegance. And it's his name that this fragrance is named after. So to find out all about it, stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. Yes, hello again and welcome to this latest episode of Mags Frags. My name's Paul and this is part one of a six-part mini-series where I give my thoughts on the entire range of award-winning fragrances from Captain Fawcett. This one is called Alessandro Manfredini EDP, which is a woody spicy fragrance for men and it was launched in 2020. And the following year it won the uh, Silver Award for Best New Niche Fragrance 2021 at the uh, Global Pure Beauty Awards. It comes in a 50ml bottle size and it's priced at £68, but you can save an extra 10% like I did by subscribing to the uh, Captain Fawcett newsletter. Or you can also try out the uh, Discovery set, which is a, a range of six, all six fragrances and they come in 2ml uh, bottles and that's just priced at £13. <laughs> Okay, so into the presentation, I've got to say that the attention to detail uh, that the, you receive from this company is second to none. And from the moment that you place your order through to the unboxing of your products, it's just a first class experience. And uh, when my products arrived, it was like I'd become a, a member of an exclusive social club. It wasn't just a, a couple of fragrances thrown in a box with an invoice. It's more of a like a, a fan club welcome pack and it contains stickers, badges, beer mats, postcards and a printed newsletter. So it's uh, little touches like that that kind of make you feel like a valued customer. So brownie point number one, that's a Captain Fawcett. All the uh, boxes in this collection come in this like vintage looking uh, brown cardboard style and most contain a little surprise inside. Uh, but this particular one features the Captain Fawcett logo on the front uh, along with the name of the fragrance and the size and the concentration. As well as this uh, beetle motif which I'll uh, get to in a second. 
At the top we've uh, pretty much got the uh, same information repeated and at the back is a, a short paragraph, uh, paragraph about Alessandro Manfredini uh, and I do like this little uh, fun uh, moustache motif on the bottle uh, that sits just above the barcode. Inside the box there's uh, like a little splash of colour uh, with some more images of beetles and a little uh, pull tab here which reveals uh, a hidden inlay box uh, with even more printed on it. Uh, but this opens out and there's um, there's actually a full story inside about how Manfredini was uh, fascinated by these uh, particular insects as a child uh, with how resilient they were and how he's had to kind of um, show the same resilience to come back from losing everything and uh, fight back from his own adversity. The bottle design is uh, very, very quirky and artistic and it comes in a, a frosted glass with a faint shimmer of pink and green when it catches the light, which is another nod to the colours found on a beetle's back. And again, the, again, the uh, bug motif is the only feature on the front. At the back is the name of the house, the name of the fragrance and the size and concentration printed in white. Uh, and the cap is in like a 1920s art deco style. Um, and it's actually the only negative that I've got with the uh, presentation because it does feel a bit lightweight and cheaply made. And also it, do it doesn't click into place and it just slides off the at atomizer incredibly easily. So uh, never pick this up by the cap folks, otherwise uh, disaster will definitely strike. The spray quality of the atomizer is uh, decent enough and overall the presentation gets uh, a solid 9 out of 10 apart from the, uh, the cap that's uh, just a little bit of a, a letdown. Okay so into the note breakdown and the top notes in this are rosemary and star anise. The heart notes are green cyclamen and ambergris and the base notes are cedar wood and toasted tonka beans. Okay, so from the uh, initial spray of this, you'll get a big blast of bright freshness, which is quite spicy, but yet green and earthy smelling from the combination of the rosemary and the star and east top notes. But these are supported by the green cyclamen and the amber green, the heart. And for the uh, first 15 minutes or so, what you'll get is a crisp, sharp and slightly herbaceous smelling fougere fragrance. But with uh, a mild sweetness uh, just in the background from the tonka and a touch of woodiness from the cedar in the base. And to me, it's uh, more of a modern reimagined fougere rather than like a, an old school classic barbershop type scent. Then after about half an hour or so, that bold and quite metallic smelling opening really dies down and it becomes uh, a lot more musky and powdery. And it settles down to become a really calming and quite laid back kind of scent with a, a very soft and elegant charm. At around about this point, I also pick up on a, a mild fig leaf type accord uh, that uh, reminds me a little bit of uh, Philosikos by uh, Diptyque, uh, but this is slightly less sweet, but you will get that kind of slight reminder of that fragrance every now and again, and you'll pick up the odd waft of it. But apart from that, I can't really think of anything else that I could uh, compare this one to. It's a fairly unique and interesting aroma that I haven't come across before, uh, but it smells very clean and easy going. Uh, but I wouldn't describe it as a, a total mass appealing uh, fresh fragrance and it's got a definite niche quality that some people might find a little bit quirky and uh, a bit challenging if you're not used to niche perfu uh, perfumery. Yeah, I'd describe this as a, a fairly light versatile fragrance for the spring, summer and early autumn. It's got a, a breezy outdoor airiness for the most part, so it's probably better suited to wear as a daytime scent and in my opinion it lends itself uh, better to wear casually. Although I can also imagine it uh, would work really well with a, a sharp suit, uh, so yeah, maybe not a, a bad all round signature daytime scent uh, that I think would work well in most situations. 
In terms of age range, in my opinion, it's probably better suited to a more mature guy age, maybe 30 plus. Um, it's not an old fashioned smelling scent in or anything like that. Uh, but for me, I just get more of a mature hipster vibe from it. And it's the uh, kind of smell that you'd uh, get when you walk into like a, an All Saints store on the high street. This is an order par from Concentration, but I'd say the performance is just about okay. It, it projects really well for the first hour or so, but then it seems to just go from being a bit of a room filler to sitting quite close to the skin in like a blink of an eye. And after two or three hours, I seem to stop being able to detect it whatsoever. I would definitely recommend giving yourself a few extra sprays, especially on your clothes if you uh, plan on uh, get, wanting to get a full day's wear out of it. Uh, but the bottles are compact enough to just pop in your pocket anyway, so if you uh, feel the need to uh, reapply it throughout the day, just uh, stick it in your jacket pocket. Yeah, this is a really creative, bold and artistic creation, both in terms of its presentation and its scent profile. It's a very unique and interesting fragrance that I think collectors and enthusiasts will appreciate a little bit more than your average high street designer fragrance customers. It does have a, a definite niche type quality that may challenge and divide a few opinions, but I personally really enjoy how it smells and I think it's a, a really cool and stylish bit of perfumery, and one that's definitely going to be different to anything else that's currently, currently uh, sitting on your dressing table. The performance is not brilliant and the cap could click into place a, a little bit better, uh, but overall I'd give this uh, an 8 out of 10 and uh, one that I'm super looking forward to breaking out in a few weeks time when the British summertime finally arrives. Okay, so that's about it for part one of this little six part series, but don't forget I'll be back every night this week with uh, a different one from the collection. And in tomorrow's episode, I'm gonna be telling you all about this one called Maharaja, uh, which is the polar opposite to this one. So you definitely uh, don't wanna be missing these reviews if you're on the lookout for something a little bit new uh, and a bit quirky and different. Uh, so don't forget to tune in every night this week at around about 7 p.m. to be the first to hear all about them. And in the meantime, uh, feel free to head over to the Captain Fawcett website uh, and check out the cabinet of curiosities and delights on offer for yourself. Uh, and as always, if you've uh, got any uh, value from this video and found it useful in any way, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to also subscribe to the channel. It's also always great to hear your opinions, your thoughts and your critiques on all of the fragrances that feature in these reviews, so don't forget to keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So once again, thank you very much for tuning into this uh, slightly special episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye bye for now.